We've been a leader in banking for more than 100 years. You'll find us here, at home, on your phone, and everywhere you go. Renaissance Bank. Understanding you. Member FDIC. Equal housing lender. Sponsored by Renaissance Bank. Good morning and welcome to Daily Journal News Break, sponsored by Renaissance Bank. Today is Wednesday, August 29th, and I'm your host, Elizabeth Walters. We're going to take a look at today's top news and sports stories across northeast Mississippi, but first, a look at your weather forecast. Today we'll have partly cloudy skies with a high around 92, and tonight's low will be around 73. And over the next three days, on Thursday, we'll have an 80% chance of thunderstorms developing in the afternoon. Thursday's high will be 88 and have a low of 71. And on Friday, we'll have 40% chance of thunderstorms early with a high of 90 and a low of 71. And on Saturday, mostly sunny skies with a high of 92 and a low of 72. Now let's take a look at today's top headlines. Legislators have passed a bill to create a state lottery, but did so without a lot of support from the northeast corner of the state. The House reversed itself less than 24 hours after originally voting to kill the lottery bill Monday night. As far as our local legislators, seven senators voted against the lottery and four voted in favor. And in the House, 13 voted against, while nine voted to support. Jody Stevenson of Ripley was among those who voted against the lottery on Monday, but switched votes on Tuesday in support of the proposal. Supporters said it will take at least a year to get the lottery up and running. And if you want to see how area legislators voted, you can check that out at djournal.com. And as part of a $2.1 million project, the Mississippi Department of Transportation is placing 18 poles and cameras along stretches of Tupelo. District 1 engineer Mark Hawley said the installation of the cameras and RF transmitters will serve several purposes, including monitoring traffic flow. The poles are being placed along Highway 45, I-22, and North Gloucester Street. Of the 18 locations, 14 will have cameras that will be used strictly for monitoring traffic flow, and the general public will be able to go online and see what MDOT sees through the cameras. MDOT will be able to look at traffic patterns and determine if lights need to be adjusted, and they'll also be able to determine if large volumes of traffic need to be moved or diverted for any reason. The cameras will go as far south as South Gloucester, Highway 6 intersection, as far north as Saltillo, and as far west as the Toyota Mississippi plant in Blue Springs. And a former police department building will soon be converted to store records. The building on Front Street was vacated in 2015 after a mold scare. The City Council approved a $122,000 contract last week to put a new roof on the building as a first step to rehab the former headquarters for the Tupelo Police Department. The city is currently storing some archived records at the Lanier Building on Crossover Street, but that facility was recently sold and the city is only renting space right now. City COO Don Lewis said that he thinks the mold has been eliminated from the old Front Street structure and that the city will do another check when they start divvying up the space for departments. Lewis said he hopes a transfer of archived paper records to the building could begin within three months. And in sports, the MHSAA will again change the format of the state basketball tournament. We broke the story last night that schools were emailed on Tuesday notifying them that now only the top two teams from the north and south regions will advance to Jackson. This is similar to the format that was previously in place with the exception being that all quarterfinal games will be north against north and south against south. Executive Director Don Hinton said that this is a financial change. Under the previous format, teams reaching Jackson and its fans would have to plan to potentially make three trips to the big house over the course of 10 days. Hinton said having the quarterfinals played at host schools will help the bottom line as teams who reach Jackson under the previous format would have to split the gate 48 ways. And under the new format, higher seeded teams will host throughout the first three rounds. If two teams are seeded the same, the team from the higher number division will host. The state tournament at Mississippi Coliseum will now take just six days instead of a week and a half. And that does it for Newsbreak on this Wednesday. Don't forget that this show is just one of the many online offerings courtesy of the Daily Journal that gets you news off the page and on the go. And today we'll have a new episode of the Prep Rally podcast. Host Brad Locke and Dalton Middleton will discuss the format change to the state basketball tournament, look back at week two high school football games, and a look ahead to this week's football matchups. You can listen to Prep Rally on iTunes, your podcast app, or at preprally.djournal.com. Each story discussed today on Newsbreak can be found in your daily journal or online at djournal.com, where you can also find a new episode of Newsbreak each weekday morning. Thanks for joining us. I'm Elizabeth Walters. Have a great afternoon.